Hi, I'm Zandra Brakefield, Professor of Neurology at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. Today my colleague Kuhn Brin, an instructor in our department, will be speaking about our exciting new work on loading diverse cargo into biovesicles such as exosomes. This includes DNA, RNA, and protein in various combinations for therapeutic purposes. I'll now hand over the podium to Kuhn. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Brenne and I'm here to talk about a, a long-term problem, which is uh, the use of viral vectors. As we all know, viral vectors are a very powerful tool to pursue gene therapy in patients, but unfortunately there's some major drawbacks with the use of viruses. We want to overcome this uh, viral vector issue with our technology, for example, overcoming the immunogenicity, which occurs when you have a re-administration multiple times of the same kind of virus, or for example, the long-term expression of transgenes, which is a huge is issue for, for example, for gene editing, or uh, let's say the small amount of cargo that you can transport it at once by AVs, and the restriction, for example, of viral genomes, so you cannot uh, transport multiple biomolecules at once. So what we did is we went back to how lentiviral vectors are formed. And what we saw is that there's not one single virion formed, but actually there's a whole array of vesicles formed. On one side, you have this infectious virion that has all the uh, components necessary to introduce a strand gene into a, into a recipient cell. And on the other side, you have this vesicle that has only host uh, components. This latter actually is present in the secrete of every healthy cell. And now people even hypothesize that viruses use these natural pathways to produce their virion. So there's a lot of interest in these vesicles, which we call exocellular vesicles, or in short, EVs, or sometimes we address them as exosomes. So why is it so interesting? Because we can mold our vector how we want it to. So we can put therapeutic agents in them. And another big advantage is, for example, that you, have, that you can harvest them from the patient himself. So for example, you can uh, isolate cells, you transform these cells, so eventually the secret of these cells has a therapeutic value. But as you can hear, this is a very lengthy process. I want to overcome this hurdle. And the way we did this is by just tapping into the freely available EVs and the biofluids, so EVs or extracellular vesicles. And you can find these biofluids, for example, in blood or CSF or etc. And so we take these EVs and load them in a tube with our biomolecules. And the way we do this is as such, so we use synthetic biology to reprogram biomolecules so they associate with EVs. So you can see on the left that there's one single peak there. Well, this is a recombinant protein that we reprogrammed in the lab. If you associate or mix this just with EVs, you can see two peaks appearing. And the reason for that is now we loaded this protein in our vesicles. So from this initial finding, we then fine-tuned our uh, technology and now we purified everything so we only have our loaded EVs uh, there without any of the unloaded protein anymore. So how we know that this is true? So we have this uh, essays where, for example, like this one here, which is a nano-resolution essay that checks in one single EV multiple kinds of uh, molecules. So we can see with the blue dots, which represent actually the cargo that we loaded in these vesicles. And on the other side, you see that it's colloquialized with a red and a green dot, which represent the EV markers. But that's not the only thing we can do. We can actually load a whole array of bio, uh, our biomolecules in our vesicles. And so, for example, this is a very major important uh, issue for uh, example, gene editing, where you have Cas9 protein, which has to collaborate with a guide RNA to target a certain region in the genome. So we made this in, in the lab synthetically, and we mix them, and eventually we can load them in our EVs, which we generate then CRISPR EVs. These CRISPR EVs then we load or expose to cells, and you can see in this figure that we get from a wild-type green cell to a knockout uh, non-green cell. And so we can measure this fluorescence over time because in this case, we are generating a knockout. But what's a very neat uh, advantage of our technique is that over several uh, cell divisions, you lose uh, the effectors that you 
uh, delivered. The only thing that remains is the gene edit. So with this clean system, I want to tell you that we made a platform. So this is an extracellular vesicle platform that uses natural occurring uh, EVs from biofluids to overcome immunogenicity problems that we see with viruses. But we also um, expand the cargo size, for example, what we have in AAVs for Cas9. So Cas9 is a huge genetic burden on AAVs. By making it a pre-made biomolecule, we load it in these kind of EVs. We also are not reliant what a virus can code because we can load proteins, RNA, and we're even expanding our technology to many more biomolecules and even synthetic molecules. And at last, it's a very clean system because everything you deliver uh, is degraded by the internal uh, things that the cell has. And as such, the only thing, for example, for CRISPR is the edit that remains. So we're testing this now in uh, neurological disease models. And by the end of the year, we expect to have our PCT filed. So I want to thank you hereby for this to listen to this presentation. And if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And I also want to thank everybody that was involved in generating this platform. Thank you.